the tab bar widget allows you to create tab-based layouts where you have a row of clickable tabs that when you click on them, they display different content in the main body of your app. So when you add this widget, it comes in by default with three tabs. And here's how the structure works. For each tab, you've got the tab, which is the label here, and then the tab bar page down here, which holds your content. Now, just like your root widget, each tab bar page can only have one root widget. So it comes in with a text widget that most likely you're going to want to either delete delete or wrap in something else because you'll have typically a bunch of content in here. So I've just wrapped this in a column. So for each tab, you have two elements in the widget tree, the label and the actual page content. Now you can navigate to these either by clicking on either one of them here, which will bring you to that page's content, or by clicking it in the canvas. Or if you're on your tab bar widget, you can select this active tab here and navigate that way. If you do it by this active tab, what's nice is that you can see the other tabbed content while still having all of your tab bar properties over here. If you want to add another tab, you can come in here and add it. And you can delete it by coming over to that tab and deleting it. All right, next, you've got two sets of properties you can work with. One is when you have the tab bar selected, and we'll look at that in a second because it's most extensive. And you can go to the tab itself, and you've got some options. And when we get to the label, we'll get into greater depth with this. Okay, so let's come back to our tab bar here. And of course, you've got the normal properties on every widget with visibility and padding and alignment. So we're just going to collapse those now. And then you've got three different categories of properties specific to the tab bar. First, you've got your label properties. And these are the labels right here. And so you have all the styling options you would expect. So you can style the color when it's selected or not selected. So right now, this third tab is selected. And so if we just change that to our primary color, you can see it there. You've got the padding that you can add to it. You can set these from your design system and a bunch of other typographic properties. Okay, so that's the styling label properties here, but that's not the only label properties that you have available to you. So if you go into your tab right here, we've got additional properties. These are specific options for two things, the text and icon. So now we just have type, we don't have any icons, but if you wanted one, you could come in here and add one and you're given options for the size and the color. And if you don't want it on the top here, you can put it horizontal. And finally, you've got options for spacing on your icon. And then of course, you can add your text in here, or if it's gonna be a dynamic value, you can bind it here. To go back to those general label settings, you could of course click on your tab bar here, or this will bring you back and it's the same place. Okay, let's close that up for now. And next we've got our tab properties. Now, as we're moving from our label to our tab to our general properties, we're moving up in the sort of hierarchy of our tab bar. So our label is just the text there. And our tab bar properties are properties on this whole tab bar. So you can think about it as this whole row right here. And the first option is we've got three different different options for tab bar style. And here we have an indicator style. And what's going to happen when you select these three different ones is we're going to be given different options down here for each different style. So right now we only have two. So we've got the color, which we've got set to this purple, and we've got a weight. So if we want to make this thicker, we can do that. But if we change this to a button style, you can see that we've got a different style of tabs and these are buttons. And along with that, let's go back over here. We've got additional sets of properties available to us. Let's just turn off our icon right now so we can get a little cleaner layout for this example. So here's our button. And then finally, we've got a toggle button that looks like this. And of course, we've got different properties specific to this layout style. Okay, great. I'm going to set it back to our indicator style for now and close this up. And then we've got our last general properties, which relate to the style and behavior of the whole tab bar. So the first option is we've got the initial tab index. And that option is about when the page loads where the tab bar is, which tab will be shown 
first. And this is a zero indexed property. So zero is this first one here and one and two. Now, typically the pattern is going to be that you pass the tab index from another page when you navigate there. So maybe these are clothing categories and they clicked on a category in another page and they're coming here and maybe women's clothing is the second one. And so you pass that into this page. Next, you've got the tab bar position and it can be positioned at the top or the bottom of the page. Let's just set that back. Next, you've got tab bar scrollable. So if I turn this on, this is going to make the tab bar in here scrollable horizontally. But you also notice what happened is that these tabs are no longer trying to fill the entire space, but they're collapsed to be the size of the text. Of course, you can change that if you go into your label properties and increase the padding right here. Now, you're only going to need tab bar scrolling if your tabs are overflowing the page. So here they aren't, so I don't need it. Next, I've got options for tab bar horizontal alignment that now I have it sent to center. But if I do it left and right, you can see how that works. Next, you've got the tab bar margin, which is around the whole tab bar row right here. Now, it's a little bit harder to see on this indicator. So if we switch the style to something like buttons, it's easier to see this where we've got eight pixels on each side let's reduce our label padding here so we can see this and come down to our tab bar margin and let's increase this to 12 and so that's 12 on the top here the bottom left and right and we're seeing more here because our tab bar is centered aligned that's why it looks like there's more because there is and two more properties to go. We've got allow swiping to switch tabs. So on mobile, the user can use their finger or their thumb to swipe between tabs. And then finally, we've got this keep tab state alive. Now, by default, when you switch between tabs, it's going to rebuild the content in the tab. So for instance, if you've got an API call or a call to your back end or even a scroll position, that's going to be rebuilt or lost if the user swipes between tabs. So if you don't want that to happen, then you can turn keep tab state alive. So there will only be one call to an API when the user initially navigates to a tab. And if they navigate away and back, it won't call that API again. And that's the tab bar in Flutterflow.